Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry video about back titrations. In this video I'll explain why we do back titrations and how we carry them out experimentally and most importantly the steps for processing a back titration calculation. Titrations are used to determine the concentration of a solution. In order to do this, we need a second solution, and this solution we need to know the concentration of. We're going to add one solution from a burette because that can deliver a very precise volume, and we're going to mix it in a conical flask because the shape of the flask allows us to swirl it without spillages. And so we know what volume of solution we add from the burette, and we know what volume of solution we placed into the conical flask. Provided we know the concentration of one of these solutions, we can use the equation moles equals concentration times volume to determine the concentration of the other. Back titrations are similar to regular titrations in a way, but their purpose is to find something out about a particular chemical or a reactant that couldn't be measured directly. So, for instance, it might be to determine the amount of a particular reactant that we've got, or its purity. And so, to just give an example, what we might do in its simplest sense is we might take a substance where we think we've got a certain mass of it, or a solution where we think we've got a certain number of moles, and then we might do the titration in the traditional way, and then look at our titration results and go, ah, actually we only had this number of moles of solution, or this mass of a particular solid. For example, if we have a certain solid, we don't know how much of it precisely we've got in moles, but we know that it's a base. What we could do is we could react that base with an excess of acid. And the reason that we react it with an excess of acid is that we want to make sure that all of this base gets used up. And then what we do is we find out how much of our acid is left over by titrating our leftover acid with another base, say sodium hydroxide, from the burette. And so we can look at how many moles of sodium hydroxide is added from the burette and therefore how many moles of acid will be left over. We then take that leftover acid moles to deduce how many moles of acid must have been used up in the reaction with our original base. And from that, we can work out how many moles of base we started with at the very beginning of the process. And so we've worked backwards to do this, so back titration. We're going to take a look at an example of a back titration now. And for the sake of simplicity, the first one that we look at, we're going to assume that all chemicals react together in a one-to-one -one ratio, which isn't always the case, but we'll make it the case now so that we understand what's happening. So we're going to take an unknown number of moles of base B and add it to six moles of acid A, and this six moles is an excess. So we can be certain that all of the B is going to be used up. And then we're going to take those leftover moles of A and titrate it with sodium hydroxide from a burette until all of that leftover A has been used up. And we use an indicator to make sure that that's happened and we've made our solution neutral. If during our titration we needed to add two moles of sodium hydroxide to our leftover acid to neutralize it, that means that there must be two moles of acid left over from our starting point. Since we started with six moles of A and at the end we had two, that means that four moles of A must have been used up when we reacted it with the original base. And so if four moles of A got used up, we can deduce that four moles of B must have been present at the start. One of the ways that we can use a back titration is to determine something called the percentage purity. And that's where we think we have a certain amount of substance, but actually we have a little bit less. And we express this amount that we actually have as a percentage of what we thought we had. And so how we do this practically is we would take our base and we would think that we've got, say, five moles of it, and then we'd add it to an excess of acid so that all of that base gets used up. And then, once again, we take our excess moles of acid and we titrate it with another base, again, sodium hydroxide, and we find out how much acid was left over after this first reaction. And so if we need to use, say, six moles of sodium hydroxide from the burette, 
that must mean that there are six moles of acid left over because our acid is once again reacting with sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we look back to the start and we think, since we started with 10 moles of acid and we had six moles left over, we must have used up four moles of acid. And if B, our base, reacts with the acid in a one-to-one -one ratio, that must mean that four moles of acid would react with four moles of base. So in fact, even though we thought we had five moles of base, we actually only had four. And so we can express this as a percentage where our percentage purity is our pure moles or mass sometimes divided by our, our impure moles. And then we multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So what we would do is four moles divided by five multiplied by 100 and that gives us a purity of 80%. We're going to look now at a specific example where we know the identity of the chemicals and also the ratio will not be one to one throughout. So what we've got is we've got two moles of impure calcium carbonate, that's a solid, and that's going to react with five moles of HCl. Now when calcium carbonate reacts with HCl you make carbon dioxide and water along with calcium chloride. You might not be told what the equation is for this reaction and so my advice for how to work out what the equation and most importantly what the reaction ratio will be is to think about the salt that you produce. Calcium being in group 2 will be a 2 plus ion as a metal and chloride being in group 7 will become a 1 minus ion and so calcium chloride will be CaCl2 and so what we can deduce from that is for every one mole of calcium carbonate we've got we will need two moles of HCl. So these two things are going to react in a 1 to 2 ratio and that's how we can know that five moles of HCl is an excess because if our two moles of impure calcium carbonate was 100% pure we would use four moles of HCl to react with it. And so what we do is we'd add our impure calcium carbonate to the HCl, that reaction would occur, and then we would take our leftover moles of HCl and do a titration with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide has got one hydroxide ion in it, and HCl has got one H plus ion in it, and so these two will this time react in a one-to-one -one ratio. And so, if we use two moles of sodium hydroxide from our burette, that means that there must have been two moles of HCl left over after the initial reaction. And so, that means that since we started with five moles of HCl and we had two moles of HCl left at the end, we must have used up three moles of HCl in the reaction with calcium carbonate. And last of all, since we know that one mole of calcium carbonate needs two moles of HCl, we can use that ratio of the calcium carbonate being half the moles of HCl to say that three moles of HCl must have reacted with 1.5 moles of calcium carbonate. And so what that means then is we thought we had two moles of calcium carbonate, we only had 1.5 moles of calcium carbonate. So when we calculate the percentage, we end up with a 75% purity for this sample. The most complicated back titration questions involve three separate steps. First of all, there is the initial reaction where the unknown substance reacts with the excess substance. And then the leftover substance is sometimes diluted and then a portion of this diluted sample is then taken out and the titration is carried out on that. For instance, if we took a sample of solid calcium carbonate that we thought had four moles present and then we added that to 10 moles of HCl and because the reaction ratio of calcium carbonate to HCl is one to two, we know that this is definitely an excess of HCl. So this is not all going to get used up. And so they're mixed together, they react, the leftover HCl is transferred to a volumetric flask and made up to a total volume of 250 cm cubed. And then a 25 cm cubed portion of that is transferred to a conical flask and titrated with sodium hydroxide. And so to work backwards through these results, we would need to know how many moles of sodium hydroxide was added from the burette. So let's say that 0.56 moles of sodium hydroxide was added from the burette. 
because sodium hydroxide reacts with HCl in a one-to-one -one ratio, we know that there must be 0.56 moles of HCl in that conical flask. And so that's stage one of our processing. For stage two, we need to acknowledge and remember that this was actually only a fraction of our diluted sample of our HCl. And so the total volume in the volumetric flask was 250 and we were only using 25. And a quick calculation of 250 divided by 25 tells us that we only took a tenth of our volumetric flask volume out. And so what that means is, since there were 0.56 moles of HCl in the conical flask, there would be 10 times more in the volumetric flask, so 5.6 moles of HCl. This, therefore, is the leftover moles of HCl. And since we started with 10, the difference between 10 and 5.6 is the moles that we used. And so this is 4.4 moles of HCl were used in the reaction. And then our final step is to use that ratio of calcium carbonate to HCl of 1 to 2, and we find that 2.2 moles of calcium carbonate must have been used up in the reaction. So instead of having four moles of calcium carbonate, we've only got 2.2 as our pure moles. And then what we do is we work out what the percentage purity is. And so we do 2.2 divided by four moles to get our final percentage purity of 55%. We're going to finish this video by taking a look at an exam style question that involves a back titration calculation. My strong advice here is to draw diagrams of what's being said in the text to help you make sense of what's happening, but also to make it clear what you need to do next in your calculations. So I'm going to draw diagrams as I go. 1.50 grams of impure magnesium carbonate, solid, is added to 100 cm cubed of 0 0.400 moles per decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid. The leftover acid was made up to a total volume of 200 cm cubed in a volumetric flask. They haven't told you this in the question, but this must be an excess that is left over in this beaker in the second diagram, because otherwise this next process wouldn't work. A 25 cm cubed portion of this acid was taken from the volumetric flask and placed into a conical flask. And then a titration was carried out and during this titration, 26.25 cm cubed of 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize the sample. What is the percentage purity of the original sample? This question could be worth as many as six, seven or eight marks. And so that can seem really intimidating as a huge empty space for you to tackle. So you need to take it one step at a time. So first of all, we're working backwards from this titration data. We know the concentration of sodium hydroxide and the volume that was added from the burette. So step one is to work out the moles of sodium hydroxide added from the burette by doing concentration multiplied by volume in dm cubed. So we've got to divide the cm cubed by 1000. That gets us a moles of 2.625 times 10 to the minus 3. This will have reacted perfectly with the hydrochloric acid that's in that conical flask. It will be a one-to-one -one ratio because that's how HCl and sodium hydroxide react. So there's going to be 2.625 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl in that conical flask. Now that was a 25 cm cubed portion that was taken out of the volumetric flask. This time the total volume in the volumetric flask was 200 cm cubed. So 200 divided by 25 tells us that we took an eighth out. And so what that means is that the total moles of hydrochloric acid in the volumetric flask will be eight times bigger. And so that will be 0 0.021 moles of HCl in the volumetric flask. And that's the leftover moles of HCl. The moles of HCl that we started with can be found by doing the concentration multiplied by the volume. So 0 0.4 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000. And that gets us 0 0.04 moles of HCl at the start. Therefore, the HCl that reacted is the difference between those two numbers, 0 0.04 minus 0 0.021, which gives us 0 0.019 moles of HCl reacting. The moles of magnesium carbonate that that must have reacted with will be half as much as that because group 2 carbonates will react with monoprotic acids in a 1 to 2 ratio. And so that means that 0 0.0095 moles of magnesium carbonate will have reacted from the original sample.
Now, we've been given a mass of magnesium carbonate, and so we need to turn our pure moles into a pure mass, and so we do masses MR times by moles, so 84.3 is the MR of magnesium carbonate, multiplied by our 0.0095 moles of magnesium carbonate, gets us a mass of 0.801 grams. And finally, we take that pure mass and divide it by the impure mass, multiply it by 100 to get the percentage purity, and we get 53.39%, or to three significant figures, which is how all this data was presented in the question, 53.4%. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to check out some of my exam question walkthrough videos, including a back titration question walkthrough that will complement this video nicely. Goodbye.